Hey guys, Gothic Melody here. As you can see, I'm starting up another new game. <laughs> Sorry, it's just uh, I there's a lot of games I want to show you guys. So here we go. This is Seduce Me the Otome. Not gonna lie, growing up. Well, okay, I say growing up, but kind of in my tweens to early teens, I was super into dating sims and, um, just dating sims. Oh, wait, sorry, let me turn. There we go, there shouldn't be any feedback now. <laughs> dating sims. Uh, ha they just they hold a special place in my heart and I don't think I'll ever fully grow out of them because they just they honestly they're what led me into getting as more into gaming and like they slowly led me into Gary's mod and from Gary's mod I met a m bunch of amazing people on the Homestuck g Homestuck Gmod server. Um, it was like Cuttlefish and Co. or something, I, if I remember correctly. And just a lot of I met a lot of amazing people there during a time that <sighs> it was a really tough time for me. And they helped me through it. Game, the games helped me through it. But the people I met through those games are what helped me especially. And I just, I honestly have the dating sims to thank for that. Because without them, I wouldn't have gotten as into... I probably wouldn't have gotten into s the Steam games as much. And it was just a huge chain reaction over the course of multiple years. But, you know what? Enough of me rambling. Let's get on to the good stuff, which is me playing a dating sim. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've actually played this one before. It's a free dating sim, by the way. It's, uh, it's by the, um, One of the main people behind it is Michaela Laws, who I absolutely love her work. She's a voice actress, but she also, um, she's made a couple of other dang sims besides this. And from what I know, I'm pretty sure they're all fully voiced. Like this one, this one is fully voiced. And it's really... It's really, like, the voice acting is spot on for this. But also, Michaela Laws is actually the... She's the person who voices Ayano from Yandere Simulator as well. Which... It's funny, I actually start, started following Michaela Laws before... I've been following Michaela Laws since before I started, um... Before I even got into Yandere Simulator. And I've been following Yandere Simulator for almost the entirety of its, uh... It's been in development.
Um, my the game I did in the past is on an old computer, so I'll have to start all over again, which I have no problems with, because I didn't finish the game the first time. So this first run through, I think, is just going to be me picking uh, the choices I want to pick. Or I might go for the one of my favorite characters to go for. To be perfectly honest, um, I'm not that interested in really any of the guys. There are a bunch of secret characters you can go after, and um, it, it's funny because uh, I was do when I first played this game, I was doing it completely without any guides or anything. And the first characters I got, it was all of the secret characters that in the story that you can secretly start dating. And it, I felt really cool when, when I got all the secret characters. Out of all the characters, I got, I unlocked all the best endings with all the secret characters first. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's get started, shall we? This is a fictional interactive narrative. Any character resemblances to real life people are purely coincidental. <laughs> also, please know that the following game is made for PG-16 audiences. Please know that sexual slash violent themes are explored in this game. Trigger warnings, abuse, implied rape, and suicide. You have been warned. Hear that guys? You've been warned. Trigger warning. <laughs> Okay, honestly, I have no problems with trigger warnings. People, I know people get all butt hurt over trigger warnings because, uh, oh, it's censoring, or oh, think of the children, or oh, this, oh, that. <laughs> there are certain trigger warn. There is. A way to use a trigger warning correctly and I believe this is a good use of it warning people that there is there are subjects very sensitive subjects covered in something that people can really get like they could be put into a bad spot because of these things I personally am not but for those who are, it's okay. It, they're called sensitive subjects for a reason. It's not just... You know what? I'm not getting into it now. I, I'm just... That's for another video. It's for a rant style video, which I do have plans for in the future. Let's just... Let's get on with this story. Please enjoy. Why, hello. My, aren't you a gorgeous sight? Can I be honored enough to know your name? Why, yes you can. <laughs> oh right, I have to hit enter. Mm. A lovely name for a lovely person like you. Wonderful. Eric, do your job. <laughs> Very well. <clears throat> this game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpai Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it since you'll be in it. Wait, is it really Rempi? I thought it was Rempi. Eh, whatever. But see, Michaela Laws. Queen. Queen material right there. Eric. Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. Somewhere. 
Come on. Is that all you got? Wanna try me, asshole? Crap! Missed. Let's retreat for now. <laughs> no kidding. Let's get out of here. That's right. You better run, you stupid punks. Stay out of our territory. Call it fate or call it coincidence. That one moment of violence started a chain of events I will never forget. This formula, created in the 70s, is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. It is used to calculate the price of European style options and is widely used by option marketers, though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern view. Rain. It's been a long time since we've gotten rain around here. But it is the season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Oh, and th this is us, by the way. This is us. Personally, I love the sound of it. The way the raindrops fell. Like the soft tapping of fingers. It was so soothing. Even looking at the droplets hit the glass, hitting the glass of the window was strangely calming. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. Though I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. Here we go, classic anime protagonist sits by the window cliche. <laughs> Even though it's technically not... You get it. The lectures in class were pretty boring. Mrs. Phillips' voice wasn't so soporific. But I just wasn't interested in what she was saying. And since it was the period right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly, I didn't really care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook and did my assignments as I had to. Not gonna lie, that's how I got- well, that's how I'm getting through school. Well, not currently, I'm all- I've gone to all online classes now, so I, I can do it fairly easily. But when I was actually physically in school, that's- this is basically how I did it. I wouldn't even pay attention, I just did it from the book. I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I'd probably have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after this semester, it'd mean the end of high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't... <sighs> Ugh. Something weird happened with my voice there for a second. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't hate high school. It was just kind of mundane how the days drifted on and on as if there were no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school was meeting my friends and hanging out with them. But that was kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of finality to it. I'd already applied to many universities the semester prior, and I was expecting replies sometime in the next few months. It seemed like the start of something new. Something that would change. That is, if things could change. I stared at the faint outline of raindrops in the distance. For now, I was stuck in this class. Miss Andy. Mrs. Phillips' raised voice interrupted my train of thought. Just when I was thinking about class, I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully she didn't pick up... Hopefully she didn't pick me just because she noticed that I was spacing out. Um, yes ma'am? 
Would you care to name the equation I set up on the blackboard? Oh, I think I read about that in the textbook last night. It should be... The Black Skull's model formula. Very good as always, Miss Anderson. Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know me by my first name, but rather by my surname. No doubt, since the surname was a trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic Anderson Family Toys. And because the f <clears throat> the and because the founder was my own grandfather. Sizu, one of my best friends, turned around and proudly gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. From beside me, I heard Naomi, another one of my best friends, clearing her throat in obvious disapproval of Suzu's choice of words. <clears throat> she means good job. Miss Capini. Oi! Care to tell me who the creators of this formula were? Uh, some guys named Black and Shoals? <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Shoals. Very good, Miss Patterson. Show off. Better study next time, Suzu. Be like us and study once in a while. Suzu rolled her eyes and slouched in her... Suzu rolled her eyes and slouched into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. She always pouted when Naomi showed her. Bleh. She always pouted when Naomi showed her showed her up. Naomi showed her up. Ugh, try saying that five times fast. That's the end of today's lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. Before I knew it, Suzu and Naomi had screwed their desks to align with mine, and we turned into the three musketeers. Whenever the teacher let the students decide on groups, we always grouped together in our little trio. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were most comfortable around each other than, say, compared to being around any other classmate. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open onto three desks. We were pretty much finished with fulfilling most of the guidelines for the project, though we did still have to add a few finishing touches here and there. After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look for any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? Suzu straightened up to look at the poster and stroked her chin. After a few seconds, her face brightened and she spoke up. How about a company name? Huh? Did we really skip over that? Of course we did! You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff, but you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. Ugh, at least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. What do you think? It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named or titled, I was the master and ending I was the master and ending decision. Even when I didn't want to be. I like Trinity Corporation. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon Company? What do dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. Who said we can't produce spicy bubble gum? <sighs> what here? What do you think? Both of them looked at me expectantly, even though I wasn't quite sure myself. I didn't really want to choose sides, but if it were up to me, I'd say. 
Dragon Company or Trinity Corporation? Mm. Dragon Company. Booyah! Dragon Company it is. All right, now that we've decided on a name, now what? As we ended our name game, a giggle scrambled my thoughts. Huh? Oh, I forgot to read. Huh? Who was that? That's what. Th that's why it said before. I looked over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends, mostly comprised of popular people that were practically friends with everyone in the school. And as a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of it all was Lizette White. She sat with a posture that indicated she was still working but that she also was ready to casually chat about her day. She had an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which was readily apparent when she first talked to someone. It was easy to make her smile and laugh, and she was quite the comedian as well. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was like a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone else wanted to be. Lizette was bright, easygoing, and above all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do after high school and, as a result, she was confident and ambitious, though sometimes it could rub a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I'd known her ever since I was young, but it had ultimately resulted in a rivalry that continued today. Of course, my friends knew what was between us, and upon seeing me glance at her, they shifted their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up frisk to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant frisk that you're making her seem to be. The day she isn't a frisk is the day I turn into you. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. It's about time! Let's bail! Unsurprisingly, Suzu was the first out of the classroom, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strolled out the door. Her seat isn't even closest to the exit and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. I wish I was f as fast as her getting out of here, or me and you both know me. Uh... Me and you both know me. She gave me a smile, as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. See? Why can't she just be normal like the two of us? It's Suzu, no. It's Suzu, Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. Huh. <sighs> I do have to admit, I was spacing out. And just because I answered one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phyllis is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. Never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally, anyone would think that opposites like them wouldn't ever associate with each other. But even though they were so different, their friendship somehow made a lot of sense. Maybe they were just perfect compliments. Or personality just didn't dictate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we three had been best friends ever since preschool. Alright, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? I 
think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubble gum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of this. <laughs> you do like spicy food, after all. We entered the cafeteria, a bustling room filled with the aromas of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted freely. Cajun fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Sizu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. You're crazy! Hell yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with... This doesn't really make a difference at all, this choice. Cajun fries and spicy chicken burger too. What Naomi's having too. Just mac and cheese and a soda. I can't stand spicy food personally. And I'm not a big fan of tuna, so I'm picking what I'm picking the option I want to pick here, so mac and cheese and a soda. That sounds good. Once we got our food, we settled down at one of the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Susan leaned back in her chair, tilting it back so that she could rest her feet on the table by her food. Alright then, is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already? I know. Let's talk about... Say boys and I will never speak to you ever again. Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? Not like any of us are gonna get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. Hey! No offense. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. True. That's okay, Suzu. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Why not? It's her senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. Well... It really wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there weren't many interesting guys in the school to go out with. Who knows? Time will tell. Naomi looked at me, wanting to continue the conversation. However, before she could speak, the speakers in the cafe started up, and an announcement echoed through the cafeteria. Miss Anderson, please come to the main office immediately. Please bring your things with you. Oh my. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Funny enough, something did happen. And it was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It... it was really cold. The rain became heavier that afternoon, accompanied by rolling thunder now and then. The skies had turned dark, though I... I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. Not that I was looking up. In fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. 
Only the monotone eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. It was only when the speeches ended that I was finally able to raise my head. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know, were related to me. Let me, sorry, let me read that again. A small gathering of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know were related to me, were huddled around a simple, small grave. For a while, all I heard was the sound of raindrops on umbrellas. If it weren't raining, everything would probably be in a heavy silence. I looked beside me where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for a small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. After all, etched into the smooth gray tombstone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter, had passed away that day. The ceremony was small. Only close family were allowed to come. Slowly, though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother, and me behind at the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral attendees walked towards us, introducing himself as grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its contents. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were allowed to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict it was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? I I couldn't believe my ears. I'd earned the family estate? At 18? That was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. What a stubborn old man. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate. Should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Honey, what do you think? I really wasn't sure what to say. Why did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. David! Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car, disinterested. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? You can go on ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time alone with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Take all the time you need. <sighs> she gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. 
I looked around the funeral grounds, which was which were completely empty, save for the sullen-looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all of this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole, uh, was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury their own family the same day they pass away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the <laughs> everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't even bother playing flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a, a choked sob. Y you told me to stay strong, but right now, I'm the farthest from it. Like that one time, a, a long time ago. Grandpa! Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I was swept into a giant bear hug, and we both laughed as he swung me around like an airplane. It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Like my father, my grandfather was loving and playful, even as I grew older. Sorry that daddy couldn't be here today. He said that he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that. Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling well. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time, and you're here, right? Mm, yeah! So what are we doing today, Grandpa? Mommy says that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go? Oh, I would love to, but I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Yes! Ooh, is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them. But I feel like something's missing. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Of course! He placed the toy in my hands with a smile, and I inspected it carefully. It was beautifully crafted, and obviously a lot of work had been put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Hmm. I think the heart on its chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it can be like a little nightlight before you sleep. He shrugged his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea. I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. Huh? <laughs> Well, I hope I can be like you one day, Grandpa. You want to make toys as well? Hmm, well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. That makes sense. Daddy didn't think of it in the same way, though. Your father. I'm sure he just wants the best for you. I'm not so sure about that. Sweetie, look at me. He bent down to look at me eye level, with a serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. I don't hate daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this, though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. 
But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. I'd heard tidbits of this from my mother and various other people. The only people who'd stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word on the subject matter. But it was clear that whatever happened set up a wall between them. It's hard though. Trying to pretend as if nothing were wrong. However, no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. He pointed his finger to my head first and then pointed at my chest. So stay strong, promise? For a moment, he looked almost sad, pleading, but as quickly as it had come, the expression disappeared from his face, and he was all smiles once again. Promise! Upon hearing that, Grandpa let out a great burst of laughter and stood up. Alright then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen! Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> you willed me the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I'd be ready to take it? Especially after this. A surge of anger bubbled within me, but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use in getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. I'm sorry. It's hard to stay calm when you've left me with so many questions, especially about what happened between you and Dad. Uh, what am I doing? Talking to a grave? My vision blurred, and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I'll bring you some flowers later. I... I miss you, Grandpa. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I give to you. Even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave, wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see. Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when you get home, okay? Thanks, Mom. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gathering my courage, I decided then that it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business programs. You are planning to major in business, yes? Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. But, it's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right after the funeral. 
Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples and sighed quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! But what if I don't want to work there? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. He came closer to me, and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. For some reason... When I heard him say that, something snapped in me. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that Grandfather Bass passed away? Of course I do. <laughs> well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. It's like nothing even happened at all. Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal. Like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead? While everyone was grieving, were you holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you feel even just... <clears throat> Did you feel just a bit happier seeing him lie in the graveyard? A flash of rage crossed his face, and he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut. You did not know my father. You did not know what he was capable of. <laughs> Is everything all right? What happened? Nothing. I'm not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. And my breath came in short pants, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still throbbed, and I tentatively stood up and looked at the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. Uh, what am I saying? Tears formed in the corner of some of my eyes, but I blinked them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Are you alright? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't worry about me, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. <laughs> tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. Oh, I don't know. My my grandpa just died. My dad's a jackass. That's that's two things right there. Uh, I, I just got slapped upside the f head for wanting to know what the fuck was actually happening. Uh, you know, I, I'm... I need to stop... Stop in the sass now. On with the story. <laughs> 
I wanted to tell her. A part of me was screaming to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the past. Well, I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Finally, my mom left me alone. It was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get my mind off of what had, what had just happened. Anything would be better than thinking any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. I was going to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I'll be prepared. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I finally found two large bags. Pulling them out onto the floor of my room, I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring, other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have many personal belongings. It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I'd miss if I just suddenly left the house. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, it'd have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it a home. Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating in my pocket. I slid my phone out of my pocket and answered it slowly. I slid my phone out of my pocket and answered it while slowly easing myself onto my bed. Who could possibly be calling it? this hour. Hey Anderson, you there? Is everything alright? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out, though it was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? Well... I slowly began to tell them about the funeral that afternoon. A small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened. And to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad isn't in a good mood, so... Could we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course! We stay on the phone until the crack of dawn. Right, Suzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? Huh. <sighs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. Yeah! I mean... We're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. <laughs> hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I say you have to step up your game! We chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon I'd forgotten about the events that day and was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show. Some program called Herlock. <laughs> Her Herlock. Oh god. <laughs> and the... The Sherlock fangirls go wild. 
Anyway, let's c continue. <laughs> we all agreed that the actor playing the titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about him, with that long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. Benedict Cumberbatch is... Yes. <laughs> Just yes. We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> yeah, he has really high cheekbones, and his eyes are pretty. Though, I do have to say I prefer Jat... Jot... Though, I do have to say I prefer Jotson. And as a bonus, his actor is just so sassy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1am? Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm gonna hit the hay for tonight. See you guys at school tomorrow. I should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But... It, it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beat hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, I promptly dressed in my pajamas and crawled into bed. Ah, <sighs> a nice hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew that I was wishing for something to change back in class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ah. Uh, curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad would probably make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to the lamp on my nightstand to turn off the lights. However, my mind was so lost in the passing of my grandfather and the thought of inheriting something so big that it haunted my mind the entire night until the next morning. Mm. I shook my head to try to clear the sleepiness out of me, but to no avail. I really didn't get any sleep last night. It's already time to wake up? Wait, school. As soon as I realized I had to go to school, I slid out of bed and looked at the Van B mirror. That's a relief. Luckily, there was barely a bruise on my cheek. I had to squint to actually see it. I doubt anyone would actually notice unless they leaned in really close. Breathing out a sigh, I got dressed, took my backpack, and caught the bus to go to school. It wasn't even hours before everyone heard the news. I was approached in school and given condolences for my loss. However, that wasn't what shocked my friends. Wait, so you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? Lucky as hell, man! <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu! Naomi's right, Suzu. Oh, man, come on! See? She knows about proper public taste. I know how to be a lady. Sheesh. Guys, I'm going there after school today because my parents want me to get used to living there. Seriously? It hasn't even been a day since you came back to school. I know, but my parents want me to try living there as soon as possible. Still, that's really fast. Are you going to be okay? Of course. <laughs> but even in the comfort of my best friends, life seemed to keep testing me. Ugh! 
hang people like that. Whoops, did I strike a nerve, Capini? She let out a small laugh as she twirled her hair around her finger. Lizette, one of the last people I wanted to see today. It's not me you should be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? I'm... all right. Uh, haven't you already heard, Lizette? Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Ah, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. It doesn't really sound like you mean it. I do mean it. Earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical Capini. Isn't her family involved with the Mafia or something? I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. I had nearly forgotten the crowd that followed Lizette, which was mostly comprised of people that no one wanted to see on a typical school day. No one had the slightest idea why exactly they followed Lizette around persistently, but they, lab but they labeled themselves as social equals with her. That is out of line! Suzu comes from an honest family! Says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the courts with dirty politicians. Ah! Hey, let's all calm down for a second, alright? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Just... stop. Stop acting like that already. Like you feel sorry for me. Hmm? What are you talking about? I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You already have everything you've wanted, and now seeing me like this... Life couldn't get any better. Bareness seeped into me, and words started flying out of my mouth without filter. But honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that I only saw Lizette in front of me. What exactly am I to you? Just another part of your obstacle course? Is that what I am? I'm sick of it, Lizette. I'm sick of all of these charades. I'm sick of you. Gasps rose from the crowd around her and I was brought back to the school hallway. Even my friends beside me looked at me in surprise. One girl looked like she was going to speak up, but Lizette held her hand held her hand up to stop her. There was an there was an emotion on her face that I couldn't quite make out, but I could see a form of pity in her eyes. No, don't you dare pay me. I looked away from her. I didn't want to see that emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. She didn't have the right to look at me that way. I'm sorry. I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. She stepped towards me and put her hand on my shoulder, giving me a tiny smile, as if for old times sake. But for some reason, I didn't feel comforted at all. Not that I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face when she leaned in close to me contorted into something complex. Something was different about her. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but something about her had definitely changed. Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later!
Something about Lizette made me feel uncomfortable. I wasn't just angry, but also uneasy. What was it? I'd never seen her like that before. But I decided to pay no further attention to it. She continued running down the hallway with her gaggle of friends behind her. I refocused my attention on Mrs. Phillips, who was walking down the hall towards me. Is everything all right, girls? Nothing we couldn't handle, Mrs. P. Just a bunch of snobs. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Well, Miss Anderson, please accept my condolences for your loss. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips. Your grandfather was a good man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies, and the money that went towards charity, too. I know. Um, sorry. I know. He was amazing. I really looked up to him, and I want to be as good as he was. Well, I know that you'll be as great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will. She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Would I? Would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seemed to have high expectations for me. I wanted to do my best to make my family proud, but to be better than my grandfather? I wasn't sure about that. From outside the school window, I saw a familiar blue car pull up to the curb. Undoubtedly, it was my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride's here. Well, I guess I'll see you both tomorrow. Want us to come with you? Oh, no. It's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fine. See you. Hey, Dad. Hey, honey. As I got into as I got into the car, I noticed my father looked troubled, clutching at clutching at his steering wheel and staring straight ahead, as if something was really bothering him. About what happened yesterday. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? No. It's nothing to worry about. I mean it. I shouldn't have laid a finger on you. You know that you're my most precious daughter. You're all that I have. I... Yet he couldn't bring himself to say what he could never say to me for such a long time. I always wanted to hear those words to aff I always wanted to hear those words to affirm how he really felt, but... I guess, even now, he couldn't say it to me. I turned my head away to look out the window. There was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. And, like that, he started to drive and the conversation between us ended. I decided to focus my attention on the passing scenery. We were taking the usual route to Grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the It was located within the vicinity of the school district, but it was still pretty far from the school and from where our house was. He'd always lived alone. He insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age, living in such a large house. I wondered, did he pass away with no one at his side as well? It sounded so lonely and sad. It was strange that he decided on living all alone in his large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. Though he and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment the entire time. Maybe alone was preferable to that. I actually hadn't visited him, visited him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent not when I was a child, and I'd grown up long since then. 
The last time I visited, though, I thought he looked just like I thought he looked just as he usually was, happy and healthy. But things change. In the back of my mind, I knew that he'd have to leave one day. It wasn't like humans could live forever. So why did my heart still feel so heavy? A car ride was mostly spent in silence until he spoke up again. How was school? Maintaining your grades, I hope. Um, yeah. I've been trying my best so far. Trying? That's not really doing the best you can, is it? With my father, only some words I said were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep up a conversation without eventually talking about academics or my future. Even if it was all something only loosely based on it. He always found a way to integrate it whenever we talked. Anyway, your belongings are in the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. Yes, I can manage on my own. The usual silence resumed between us. I really wasn't sure what to say around him, especially when most of the time we didn't share the same opinions. One question did linger in my mind, though. If he was going to justify acting so nonchalant at Grandfather's funeral, I had the right to at least know why. Leave it alone or try again? Try again. Say, Dad, about you and Grandpa. We are not talking about this. I feel like we should be, because Grandpa did leave us yesterday, so... I wouldn't care if he had left even long before that. I do not want to hear it, and that is the end of this conversation. As always, he managed to shut down any other form of conversation related to him. It was just like what happened last night. I opened my mouth slightly, but I closed it again. It was like talking to a brick wall. It wasn't like I could faint fi it wasn't like I could find out anything by somehow arguing my way through it. Alright then. I leaned against the car door and stared out the window. I really couldn't think. What would this place be like? I'd been to my grandfather's house before, but it was one thing visiting, and it was another thing actually living there. How would I manage living on my own without any trailing... Uh, how would I manage living on my own without any trail... How would I manage living on my own without any training to really care for a house? I knew that naturally the bills would be paid by my parents who inherited grandfather's stocks to the corporation, but I'd never lived independently before. Thinking about it made me feel like some kind of bird being pushed out of the nest. Though I, though I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit daunted at the prospect of actually moving into a new place. Most people my age would be ecstatic m moving out. After all, it had symbolized some kind of change in their lives, like being on the road to independence. But I felt like it was nothing of the sort. I really hoped I wouldn't let my parents down. I wouldn't want to let my grandfather down. What would he be saying right now? I gazed up at the passing clouds in the sky. If you're out there, grandfather, 
How would you be doing? Would there be anything you'd want to tell me at this moment? And, of course, no answer. What was I doing? Searching for an answer in a heaven that would or would... Searching for an answer in a heaven that would or wouldn't exist? I ducked my head to stare at the blur of trees and cars from the car window. My head was just definitely going into the clouds there at the moment. Either way, I found myself being driven off to my new home. The car rolled to a stop and I drifted out of my thoughts. Here we are. Go on in. Alright. Tell Mom I love her. Alright. I love you, Dad. Oh, wait, let me say that again. <laughs> I love you, Dad. No, make sure to come by and visit us often. No, I'm going to miss you lots. Nothing other than a blank stare. I paused a bit for f I paused a bit before reaching for the car door handle, waiting for any form of a goodbye. But he didn't speak again. I sighed and exited the car, hearing my dad pop open the trunk. I saw the two large bags I packed last night that were large enough to carry only the things I needed. I took them out, placed one bag on each shoulder, and closed the trunk. Then he drove off, leaving me alone in front of the mansion. I watched the blue car fade into the distance of the road before turning to see my new home. There it is. It's huge! My grandfather gave me this? It's hard to believe. The house was framed by a set of tall gates and I hesitantly pushed them aside to look in and I hesitantly pushed them aside to take in the entire estate. The house still looked like it was when The house still looked like it had when I last visited him. At a glance, it seemed kind of intimidating with its size. Though if I went closer, it was clear that there was more to it than that. The brick walls were framed by sh shrubbery and lovely flowers, giving it a homey and welcoming look. But in contrast, the tall doors into the house gave me a feeling of grandeur. Who knew what was waiting for me? But I wouldn't back down at this moment. I took out the key to the front doors and unlocked them. Well, might as well make myself at home. I'll be staying here for quite a while anyways. That's when I saw them. Lying on the floor was a group of men. They were all unconscious, but there was no explanation as to why they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags as I let the door close on its own behind me. H huh? H who the heck? Who the hell are these guys? Why are they here? What's going on? Some of them had open wounds. The blood was staining the floor and the scent was intermingling with the air. I couldn't help but feel bad for them instinctively, but nevertheless I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and concern to confused and demanding answers. Who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police! Still nothing. None of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seemed to, it seemed surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into, but I wanted answers quickly. That was until ah, get away from me, woman! You're going to let me kiss you.
I couldn't believe it myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt serene and calm about it. Slowly, a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss, even when my mind vehemently refused. Uh, huh? Uh, go, go ahead. Wait, fuck. Uh, uh huh? Uh, go ahead. As he kissed me, I could feel my body go weak. I didn't know why, but that kiss was draining me of my energy, and yet, it was so good and made my heart sing. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over every nerve on my body. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. Hmm? The person kissing me, Sam was his name, went behind him. I said stop. Now. Mm. Fine. Finally, he pulled back, and I was left standing there in a daze. Wh what? Huh? I couldn't tell what was going on. My mind was completely enwrapped by the... I couldn't tell what was going on. My mind was com completely enthralled by the kiss in my thoughts that melted into the depths of my forgotten memories. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. <laughs> Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her... Sorry, guys, I'm adjusting some things real quick. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. Sheesh, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. I guess you are right, Matthew. I agree. Hmm. However, as the men got up and started to chat freely, my thoughts began to reassemble, and I remembered my confusion and the anger once again, only now multiplied tenfold. Who? What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? Hold on. I remember this part. Gotta prepare my voice. <clears throat> There we go. <clears throat> and I exploded. What is going on? Why the hell are you in here? The fuck. What is going on? Why the hell are you in here in my house? Wait, fuck. I keep fucking up. <laughs> What is going on? Why the hell are you all in here in my house? Why the hell are you all wounded? Why did you kiss me? Who are you guys? I couldn't help exploding, but after being taken advantage of and being left in a mush state, my words escaped without filter. I definitely scared the men around me. Even the man who kissed me. Wait a second. The guy who kissed me. 
Yeah, what's your problem? What's your problem? You can't just go around forcing people to kiss you like that. Are you some kind of pervert? Oh god, the pervert. <sighs> really? Well, I, I guess this is kind of based around some anime trope, so I guess that makes sense. But it's so annoying. Pervert? It was only a kiss! Yes, exactly. Thank you, Sam. That That's my point exactly. It meant nothing. It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? Ow! Hey, what was that for? I know first kisses aren't exactly amazing and full of sparkles and something out of a fairy tale. But I'd at least expected it to be more than just something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. <laughs> okay, that's where I disagree. <laughs> the first kiss- your first kiss can be pretty, um, like... It's kind of a milestone, you know? And it's kind of annoying if someone just takes that from you. Personally, my first kiss, it was mutual and really good. I, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just, I'm leaving it at that. It it's, it's gonna get too personal if I try to go further. Are you asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. And, again, a valid point. But... Sorry, fixing the pop filter. Eh. Anyway, as, uh, as I was saying, a valid point, which is why you don't, like, force... Force, mm, damn it, hiccups. <laughs> Valid point, but that's exactly why you don't force it onto people. <laughs> but it's not just first kiss. I'm against anything of that nature that's forced, honestly. So... Even if it was, like, a forced hug, I'd probably be saying the same thing. And, yes, f hugs can be forced. And it's extremely uncomfortable when they are. Just... <sighs> so many bad experiences with forced hugs, but... I swear it's not just like ew someone touched me kind of thing. I <laughs> like again this is going to get too personal if I try to explain this. So fuck it. It's for another video. Just got to remind myself for another video. Him again or ask for an apology. I kind of want to hit him again. <laughs> but I don't know. I'll ask for an apology. You should at least apologize. That would suffice. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? <sighs> Apologies aren't my forte. But, I'll try my best. Hmm? Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just... I act on impulse, okay? 
it's difficult to control myself in. Yeah. What am I saying? It's okay. I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah. No problem. Anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the future, just a fair warning. I know Taekwondo. I think I've bickered enough. Time to get back to the main issue here. So, what exactly are all of you doing in my house? <sighs> Miss, please forgive us in our intrusion. We didn't know this abode belonged to anyone, nor did we have the time to take that into consideration. What? What do you mean? You don't just barge into people's homes. We wouldn't have had to if we weren't as wounded as we are currently. We just escaped from a deadly fight that could have ended our lives. Luckily for us, your home was near and the windows were unlocked, so we quickly came inside. Last time I remembered, there were laws preventing strangers from stepping on private property. Although, considering the severity of their wounds, it had to be serious. I guess that explains the wounds, but not why he kissed me and... He had absolutely no right to do that. Well, lovely flustered lady, it's hard to explain, truly. We're not exactly normal. Not normal? What are you guys, demons or something? I asked almost jokingly, but the boys seemed to take my question differently. <sighs> <laughs> well, yeah, actually, something like that. Eh? We're incubi, miss. Demons who consume and use sexual energy of humans to survive. Incubi? The fabled demons that existed to haunt humans and make them sex-crazed monsters? The mythical beings that could look like anyone just get into your pants? The imaginary monsters you only see in movies or on TV? Hello? Did you hear him? We're telling the truth. Do you think she's still processing it? Yes. And she'll understand right about... It was funny while it lasted, but it's time to cut the joke short. Incubi don't exist. There was no way they existed. That would be practically impossible. Ahem. Incubi is the correct plural form. And yes, we do exist. Oh, that's right. He corrects you. Why do you have to say incubuses? I know that the correct form is incubi. Uh, <sighs> Gothic, my, my little, my character that I use for the channel is part demon. I, I have, I'm extremely interested in all the, myth, all the different mythologies and different types of demons and everything. It pisses me off that I got, like, I'm supposed to say incubuses when I know the correct plural form is incubi. <laughs> Why? Why could there not have been an option where you could have, like, had knowledge about these things? <laughs> Just, okay, I know why it was one of her, it was like one of her first games and one of her first times writing and stuff, so, honestly, I'm, I'm, only saying all this for comedic effect I for any fanatics out there I know that this is not her first uh, um, this was one of her first like time one of her first times writing basically prove it as soon as the words left my mouth I instantly regret them very well. Eric, go ahead. <laughs> Very well. 
My sweet, you're so tempting with such non-belief. Let me ease your mind with a tender kiss. I promise, you'll enjoy every minute of it. And maybe, you'll even want more. What? Mm. Once again, I was lost in a pool of calm and serenity. Staring into Eric's eyes, I felt waves of heat course through my chest and onto my face, painting my cheeks red in their wake. I couldn't help but nod and agree to his offer. Y yeah, okay. Mm. With another kiss, my heart began to flutter once again in my chest, and my mind was sent spinning in a heated, passion-filled pleasure. Yet, I could feel my body drain of energy as he kissed me. Alright, that's enough. Aww, very well. <laughs> I feel so much better. As he pulled away, I was left in a mental mush pool. I felt weak in the knees, despite my will demanding me to stand straight in front of the boys before me. The world around me began to spin as I tried to speak. Uh, I... I think I'm going to... Uh, where are our manners? I'm James, and these are my brothers. Sam, Eric, Matthew, and Damien. Miss, are you okay? Shit, she fainted. <sighs> hey guys, Future Melody here. Okay, long story short, I, re I actually recorded three hours of this as the first episode because I couldn't, when I record, I can't see how long I've been recording for. So, I decided to break this up in to two two episodes <clears throat> um this is going to be the end of episode 1 and the next one is going to be the going to be the next half is going to be episode 2 but they were originally planned to be on one episode i really didn't re mean to record as much as I did. Um. Yeah. So. This is the end of episode one of Seduce Me the Otome. As always, please remember you are loved and you are important. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Good night, good morning, and if you're going to sleep after this, sleep tight. This is Gothic Melody, signing off. Bye.